Hey everyone, how's it going? Delrith here, bringing you another rapid fire review, this time for the game Planet Zoo. Planet Zoo was developed and published by Frontier Developments PLC, the same company that made both Planet Coaster and Jurassic World Evolution, a game I previously reviewed. So what is Planet Zoo? It's a franchise building tycoon game focused entirely around the creation and upkeep of massive zoos with a large focus on creativity, conservation efforts, with adding things like staff management and research and what have you into the mix. You'll be learning quite a bit about each and every animal in your care and how to properly build everything you could possibly dream of from the ground up, resulting in some absolutely crazy and awesome builds. There's a main story too where you play as a newly hired zookeeper being brought to various locations around the world with your task being to check on the welfare of all sorts of animals, improve various zoo facilities, and at certain points take incredibly unique map designs and create special zoos on them to house specific species. Let me just jump right in and start by saying that this is without a doubt the most incredibly detailed and good looking tycoon game I have ever played. It is, bar none, the most intricately designed game Frontier has produced to date, and honestly I'm not exaggerating when I say I spent hours just looking around, checking out different zoos people created, and observing animals in their enclosures, it was just so incredibly captivating. Every single object down to pavement level is great to look at, with it being extremely obvious to me that this was a game that the development team had huge passion for. Stalls have their insides completely furnished and detailed, animals have dozens of different animations and interactions with everything in their pens, and guests will do all sorts of things to interact with the facilities. There's really no end to the list of visual effects I discovered while playing. The game even goes so far as to have seasons and weather effects while you're playing, with each and every object reacting to said things like getting covered with snow, getting wet when it rains, drying out during hotter seasons. You name it, they seem to have thought of it. Anyway, chat, real talk. What do you think about filling this entire enclosure with a thousand red pandas? There's a massive array of plants, scenery objects, and just general detail props that you could put down everywhere, as well as things like special effects generators themselves, and information panels and such that just add to the charm and aesthetic out of it all. Themes exist for things such as walls, enclosures, shops, etc. and so forth, adding even more variety to the visual sense as you're playing through, and I was unlocking and discovering things about 20 hours into the game that never ceased to impress me. Sound design is also entirely on par with the graphics, with animals all having their different calls faithful to what their real world counterparts would sound like, guests having chatter, you know, their own language like The Sims of course, and a huge amount of static objects having their own audio to boot. The soundtrack kicks ass, and I found myself enjoying every single track that played during my time with the game. Seriously, the music itself just ties in so well with the entire theme of a zoo tycoon, and whoever was in charge of it nailed it. Okay. Oh yeah, and there's this extremely awesome encyclopedia thing that they've gone and added all the visuals and data to, literally on every animal in the game, and the sheer amount of effort that went into that alone is freaking amazing. Almost everything you could want to know about all the animals you're going to be taking care of is in there, and they even tie it into general gameplay, so props to that. Unfortunately, all this detail and all the shine leads to the first of only two problems I have with Planet Zoo as a whole. It has pretty cruddy optimization and really bad FPS even when your zoo is just starting up. Like, it's pretty bad. I remember back when playing Planet Coaster that the game would slow down and bottleneck your processor, and with this being a sequel that's even more highly detailed on the same engine, the problem persists. This guy's just like... Uh, see what I mean about the FPS though? Like, it's so laggy, and it caps out my processor at 100%. And this hat was this problem with the planet coaster too. It even adjusting it doesn't it doesn't matter if you adjust the volume or the volume, the graphic settings or anything like that. Everything will just slow down while you're playing, and the stutter is entirely obvious, stemming from the fact that it just seems to eat up every resource your CPU has to offer. This is kind of impressive, especially given the fact that I'm running on an i9 at 5 gigahertz and generally can run six different games at once without a problem. It's not graphics related either, as turning everything to low has zero impact, and in the later stages of building a zoo, it definitely becomes a problem. 
If I have it pretty bad with my rig, I can only imagine how slow it runs on other PCs, and I really hope that they come to optimize it as it impacts your enjoyment later on. Seriously, Frontier, work on this. It's, it's bad enough it needs to be a priority. As far as game modes go, there's four of them. Uh, there's Campaign, which I have to say is quite awesome and offers 12 different missions of various types, each one with full voice acting, and it's entirely charming. Challenge Mode basically throws you into a zoo with starting phones and a variety of different objectives and challenges you need to overcome to be successful. Franchise Mode, which basically allows you to build multiple zoos across locations all tied together, with the economy of animals being supported by your trades and other players' breeding programs and whatnot. And finally, Creative Sandbox Mode, which offers you full access to every single animal in the game, every theme piece, and pretty much everything that you could ever unlock by playing all the missions progressing through research trees. Each game mode is entirely enjoyable in its own right, and I encourage anyone who plays to definitely do the story mode first and foremost, as you'll need the tutorials to play this game effectively. I personally liked franchise mode the most. There is just something incredibly fun about picking zoo locations around the world and building them up from scratch. Being able to name your business and all that, just making it more yours, and I appreciated that. Building in Planet Zoo is incredibly simple, but has massive potential and difficulty depending on how hands-on you want to get. What I mean by this is that, of course, there are prefabs for each and every building type you'll need. Things like staff offices for employees, vet clinics, stores, etc. But if you don't want to use those prefabs, it offers you the ability to build shells and designs of said buildings from the ground up. This means that there are pillars, walls, railings, decorations, ceilings, floors, rooftops, everything you could possibly need, all in various designs and themes to fit what you're going for. It's almost the same level of detail that you'd find in like a CAD program, allowing you to seriously go insane with creativity and build everything you could possibly think of. If you want a basic idea of how elaborate you can get with the building pieces in Planet Zoo, just play through the campaign. They really do a good job at showcasing the possibilities of the game, with the respective zoos you visit and manage all being unique and making use of this system. If you want a giant flame-spewing robot to house your giraffes in, you can build it. If you want your gift shop to be at the top of Mount Doom inside an entire castle, you can do that too. Seriously, the possibilities are endless and the custom system rocks. I can't wait to see until I start seeing some insane creations down the line. I'm really curious to see how far some people can take it. As far as terrain building and terraforming, there's a really great paint and tool system specifically designed for it, further adding to pushing the boundaries of creation that you're capable of in this game. Adding different types of grass, rock faces, or whatever is as simple as selecting it and with the proper size and strength, then just dragging your mouse over the landscape. Of course, as this is a management sim, you'll be responsible for each and every aspect of your park you can imagine. Things like hiring staff, managing prices, well-being for animals, barrier construction, etc. Staff management itself is a breeze, though, simply clicking and dropping the type of employee you want in your zoo in any given place. Uh, staff is tied into research, with roles like the vet being able to research specific tiers for each animal type you put in your zoo, unlocking things like toys, environment pieces, and you know bonuses to stuff like growth, as well as various diseases and horrible things that can impact your wildlife. It's a horse disease! How did my wolves contract a horse disease? Mechanics will be the doorway into research for things like themes, enclosure designs, shops, you name it. And of course, stuff like repair efficiency on walls and whatnot. There's really a ton of research options, so it's good that each mechanic or vet can work on different ones simultaneously. Animal keeping itself, I would say, is fairly complex, with each species having a multitude of different requirements that you'll have to meet when taking care of them. These will include things like enclosure size, temperature, preferred plant life, preferred biome, entertainment, pack size, diet, age, health, and so on, all contributing to the total well-being status of your creatures. It sounds like total overload of information, but really it's not given how it's presented to you, with simple solutions always being the answer to issues that prop up. If your animals are bored, drop cardboard boxes in there for them to play with. If their habitat isn't perfect and they want more grass, simply paint more with the terrain tool. Too many animals? Just ship them off to the wild. Not enough climbing space? Build a custom jungle gym. It's, it's all easy to understand and fix. Side note, uh, if your animals are super unhappy though and you suck at zookeeping as I found out, uh, some species will actually rebel and try to break out of their enclosures, with things like wolves and stuff being more than capable of terrorizing and attacking your guests, so you should probably do your best to keep them content unless, you know, 
you're into that sort of thing. There's exhibits you can put up, which are fairly simple and self-contained boxes with easy to adjust settings. These exhibits containing things like spiders, centipedes, snake, etc. They're nice money makers and neat for you to look at if you just chuck them all over your zoo. And I enjoyed that they added bugs and what have you to the game on top of all the dozens of animals you already have to choose from. Economics are pretty simple to understand in Planet Zoo. Money is generated by three things, entry ticket price, donations from donation boxes, and selling animals to other zoos. There's really not much more complexity to that, and it's entirely fine by me, as it gives you a lot more time to focus on the various other aspects talked about previously. Speaking of buying animals, I have to bring up something that really bothered me, and my final complaint, my second complaint about the game, is that franchise mode is always online, which results in not being able to buy animals or any sort of, the sort of stuff if their servers are down. Given the fact that this is my favorite mode and probably the most fun to explore and play at any given point, I have to complain. It's, it's a total pain in the ass when you get disconnected. Sure, you can build and still design your park with like benches and stuff, but the most important part, trading animals, just is not possible if you don't have an online connection. Seriously, it's up and down quite frequently and the first two days were awful. Not being able to play franchise mode effectively delayed this review just a little bit and I genuinely hope it gets more stable in the future as everything else about their game just kicks ass. In the end though, what really matters is as an overall statement is that this game is absolutely incredible, fantastic, captivating, and the single best tycoon simulator I have ever played. I genuinely enjoyed every minute of my time with Planet Zoo and I can entirely recommend buying it to anyone who has ever liked a tycoon game of this type it stands above all of them and I, I absolutely adore every little thing it has to offer it was just awesome to get into a great game like this and just play it for the sake of playing it and just seeing the passion the development team clearly has in every aspect of their design was just an added bonus so in the end i'm going to give planet zoo an extremely solid 9 out of 10 with the potential to easily be a 10 out of 10 that other tycoon games should try and strive for provided they fix their optimization and seriously it's it's that bad and maintain their online servers better it's genuinely a fantastic game i can't stress that enough play it go buy it and check it out if you are on the fence about the purchase and at 44.99 you're definitely going to get your money's worth in the long run that's going to be it for this rapid fire review if you like to do me a solid and hit that like button and subscribe and if you're already subscribed ring the bell to get notifications on new videos we put up in the future oh yeah and if you like the rapid fire reviews or would like to see when i'm doing them live on twitch you can head over to my twitter at ajsa delrith or directly to the twitch at angry joe show and then give me a follow i'd appreciate it until the next video this is delrith and i'll be seeing you